Chapter 7, Internal Forces in Structural Members. So we've been using the method of sections for a, a while now, and we have found that back in Chapter 3, if we wanted to find out what was going on or what some of the forces were on the inside, let's say at that point right there, we could use the method of sections to define a subset of the system and draw a separate free body diagram of a subset of the system. So that's what we did here. We said that there's a weight going down and there will be a tension going that way. We also uh, said that internal forces like this tension, like this tension, transfer equal opposite to the other side of where we took it from. So there will also be a tension equal opposite at that point. We also said that if a structure is in equilibrium, then any portion of the structure is in equilibrium. For example, if this is in equilibrium, then this part is also in equilibrium, and I can write equilibri equations of equilibrium that define uh, what's necessary to keep that from moving or accelerating. Inside, in chapter six, we had trusses, and we said that if I want to find out what is going on inside a truss, I can write a little method of section, so I'll do it over here, and I can say that the internal forces can be defined and what I said was, or what we said was, that if the whole structure is in equilibrium, and now this portion of it is also in equilibrium, all we have to do is define what those forces are, and we can thus be assured that that piece is also in equilibrium. We said also that the four internal forces transfer equal opposite. So that now, with those forces, this portion is also in equilibrium, and we can use the equilibrium equations to solve. A beam that it has some loads on it, for example, it's got a 30 kilonewton meter couple over here and a 10 kilonewton load over here. There are some forces or something going on internally to that. And we're going to look at now, say, if I want to find out what is happening at that point, I can separate this point out, draw a little section here, separate it out, and now define the forces that are happening. We'll call them right like that. Let's say that there's a force going down, and maybe there's also a moment that is going in this direction that will be required to keep this portion in equilibrium. So I can be assured that if this is in equilibrium, this portion is also in equilibrium if I define those forces properly. If I find the forces properly to keep this one in equilibrium, and then these forces transfer equal opposite to that side. So in other words, this one will have the same values of forces, but they'll be reversed. Um, it'll have a force and a moment there, which will keep this side also in equilibrium. All right, so let's look at some of our understandings here. Internal forces and structural members, many times in design, we need to know what those internal forces are to determine whether a member is strong enough to support the load. We don't want it to break. And many of you have experienced things that break before. And the reason is, is because the forces on the inside exceeded the material's ability to support those forces. That's called stress. Uh, we'll talk about that in mechanicals and materials, obviously at much greater depth. But we've learned that the method of sections can analyze what's going on inside the truss using two force members and two force member rules. Those are good. For machines and frames, we said there are also multi-force uh, rules and multi-force and multi members. Now, in the past, we've been able to use transmissibility and free moment techniques to move them around. But in internal forces and structural members and uh, in this chapter, we have to keep them where they are applied. So we can't move the forces or the moments, and I'll be showing you some examples of that. All right, so let's assume that we have a beam here and we want to find out what's going on in the middle. There are three forces that are up, that are uh, occurring in the middle of a beam. First of all, there may be a normal force, and a normal force will be going pulling away or this way. It could be in compression as well. Maybe there's also a vertical force, and this is called shear. Shear will be perpendicular to the line of the beam, or the it'll be perpendicular to, I don't know how you say that, perpendicular to the beam, if you will. If you define it going in that direction on that side, it has to go positive in that direction as well. Now here's our little convention. Positive shear, this is called the shear force, positive shear tends to rotate the little section clockwise. So imagine that this was hinged right here. If I pushed it down here, wouldn't you agree that it would tend to rotate it clockwise? That is our convention for positive shear. 
The same thing happens on this side. If I said this is my point of rotation, positive shear on this side will tend to rot this, rotate this one clockwise as well. So our convention again is that on the left side, positive shear goes down. On the right side, positive shear goes up. And it's very important to follow these conventions. Bending moment has a positive convention as well. On the left hand side of our section, or the left section, positive moment is goes in the counterclockwise direction. What it does is tend to bend this little section into a concave, which I like to say makes it smile. On the right hand side, the positive moment goes in the clockwise direction because it tends to also bend it in a concave direction and also tends to make it smile. So very important to follow this positive convention. On the left hand side it goes in this direction or counterclockwise. Positive moment on that side goes in the clockwise direction. Alright, then let's analyze this structure that we were just talking about. We have a beam here that's under some load. It's got a couple over here and a, mo and a force over there. It's got a couple of supports. Let's first find the reactions. So I'm going to draw the reactions on the picture here. I'm going to say that there's a BY and a BX. A Y is a pin, so there's going to be a AY over there. Okay, um, in order to find those reactions, let's uh, sum the moments about B. So sum of the moments about B is equal to zero. Fairly easy. Let's do that. We got negative 10 times 1.5 minus a y times 3 plus 30 is equal to 0 and I can solve that for a y is equal to 5 kilonewtons alright and then I can find the other force b y by summing the forces in the y is equal to 0 so I got a y minus b y and you can see that b y is also equal to 5 kilonewtons okay that's kind of the way we get started. I can also sum the forces in the x direction, but you can see that bx is equal to zero because there are no other forces in the x direction. All right, I want to find out what is going on at c, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little section. I'm just going to say I'm going to do the method of sections and draw a section right there, and then we're going to separate out the left side from the right side. So let's draw the free body diagram here of the left side. It's got an AY going up, got a couple over there. Now, AY, and this is going to be 30. Let's draw what keeps this in equilibrium, and there's going to be a force here. We're going to call that shear, and a moment, which we're going to call moment at C, or a couple. All right, how can we solve that? Uh, fairly easy. We just sum the forces in the Y and sum the moments and see what we can find. All right, and again, I've drawn the shear as a positive going down on the left side, and I've drawn the moment as a positive in the counterclockwise direction on the left-hand side. By our conventions, that's what we have to start with. So let's see that. Some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. I've got ay minus shear is equal to zero. So shear here, v at c, is equal to 5 kilonewtons. Okay. And let's sum the moments and see what we get. Some of the moments about, let's see, some of, oops, let me get the right color. Some of the moments about any point, actually, you can sum the moments about A or, or the other side, but I'm going to sum the moments about A is equal to zero. So I've got here, I've got that couple, which is 30, minus the shear, times 1.5. So. Let's see, the couple is going in this direction, that's positive. Shear is going in that direction, times that lever arm, which is negative. Then I got that couple, which is positive, or that or unknown moment, and that's going to be moment at C is equal to zero. So I should be able to take this, plug that in, so I got 30 minus 5 times 1.5, plus the moment at C is equal to zero, and I got moment at C is equal to negative, 22.5 kilonewton meters. Now I got a negative answer. Here's the rules that we're following. I want you to I want you to draw these in the positive direction. 
according to our rules and then when you get a negative answer leave it there do not go and change the arrow directions and change this to a positive that would be inappropriate and we're going to talk about why as we go forward but there are some special things that we're going to do when we graph things and we need to know whether shear is positive or negative according to our rules and we'll need to know whether moment is positive or negative according to our rules okay so we're going to leave that there let's draw a free body diagram of the other side and that's fairly easy to do as well so again, I'm, I've separated this out. I'm just going to draw a free body diagram of the other side and see what we get. So I've got a 10 kilonewton force going down. I've got a BY going up. And on this side, I want to have positive shear and a positive moment. And these are both at point C again. I guess I should put point C on both of those. Let's see what I get. Some of the forces in the Y. So I got positive shear plus BY minus 10. Minus 10 is equal to 0. Solving that, putting the by on there, I get v, or shear, is equal to 5.0 kilonewtons. And let's solve for the moment. Again, you can sum the moments about any point, but I'm going to sum the moments about point C over here, which is right here. So I'm going to sum the moments about C is equal to 0. So I got by times 1.5 minus 10 times 3 minus the moment at C is equal to zero. So I've drawn this moment going in this direction. That's negative according to our right-hand rule. And so in this case, it is going in the negative direction according to the right-hand rule. And BY is going in the positive direction. 10 is going in the negative direction according to right-hand rule about that point. Solving that for the moment, I got the moment is equal to, moment at C is equal to negative 22.5 kilonewton meters. So again, what I've done is solve this from either side and I get the same answer. And that's what you should expect to, to say or expect to find is that it honestly doesn't matter which side you start from and which side you're, uh, how you're approaching it. You should, now again, some, sometimes one side is going to be easier than the other one, but in this case, they're about the same, but you should get the same answer where you're joining, uh, uh, where you're, where you're drawn the section there.